hey friends uh so every instinct about like socialization says don't make this video you look like crap you're puffy and tired and laying down and probably murmuring um but or mumbling i think that's the word i wanted to just I decided I was going to record this because nobody ever sees me on a bad day. Like, on the internet, I just I just disappear and nobody knows how bad it is. They just think that I'm not there. They don't think about me. I don't know. You know, you don't really you give too much thought to one of your friends not being on Facebook for a day. Maybe for a week, but a day, no big deal. So, I don't know. I just kind of felt like in an effort to give you a glimpse into what my life is like with Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome, I would record myself on one of the worst days I've had in a very long time and kind of give you a rundown of what's going on with me right now. So a few days ago, as you may or may not know, I broke my toe and that sucked. And then last night I was coming out of my bathroom just walking on a flat floor, no problem, and I dislocated my left foot, and it was so painful that my husband had to run over and get my wheelchair, and it took, well, I couldn't get it back in on my own. I got it partway back in, and then I slept, and it went back in on its own sometime throughout the night. So my body has been through... I, those are just two things that have happened. Um, what else has happened? My hips, like these are normal things for me, so sometimes I neglect to mention them. My hips, my sacrum, my pubic bone, um, some of my vertebrae, some of my fingers, my knee a few times this past week have all dislocated or subluxed. A subluxation, for those of you who don't know, is a partial dislocation where it doesn't come out all the way, it just comes out part of the way. So what's happening physiologically in my body right now is that it's in cave woman mode. It thinks that we're being like mauled by a saber toothed tiger or something and we need to stay awake because fight or flight. When your body goes through trauma on a daily recurring basis, you go into battle mode and it's the same kind of sleep schedule that people in combat zones are on where... They don't really sleep. You just kind of sleep for maybe two minutes here, two minutes there, and you're startled awake almost constantly. So my sleep right now is crap, and that's contributing to the overall crap feeling that I'm having. Additionally, when you're in fight or flight mode, um, physiologically speaking, you lose your appetite because when it's time to run from the dinosaurs, it's not time to sit down and eat a sandwich. So I have no appetite uh, for dinner. I had like 10 leaves of lettuce and maybe one fish stick, which I know is like super healthy, but whatever. Um, and I only ate that so that I could take my meds because I'm in just so much pain right now. And my body is just really tired and what one of the most difficult things in my experience about having Ehlers-Danlos Syndrome is that you're constantly in this fight or flight state like to some degree or another your body is constantly going through traumas dislocations on a daily basis and I'm not speaking for everybody that has EDS because I know some people that have EDS don't go through daily dislocations you know, some people, they don't even go through monthly dislocations, and it's a spectrum. Um, I'm in the process of trying to get approved for disability. I got denied. I'm in the reconsideration phase. And so I had all of my healthcare professionals write me letters for Social Security. And I've got to tell you, there is nothing more disheartening than five separate medical professionals feeling so strongly about your inability to function in normal society that they write you novels of letters talking about how you're on the severe end of the spectrum or you're one of the most hyper people 
hypermobile people they've ever met or how you go through dislocations on a daily basis, just shifting positions or um, rolling over in bed. Like to have five different medical professionals outline that in black and white and put their, you know, their letterhead on it doesn't really feel that great. I mean, it's, it's validating, I guess, on some level to have so many professionals agree that like, yeah, no, you're not doing great. Um, and then on another level, it's devastating. I mean, I'm going to be 34 in three days, I think, on the 17th, whatever today is. I don't even, I don't even know what today is. I've just been in bed all day. I woke up at like noon and then I just stayed in bed. I haven't even changed out of my pajamas. I put on a hat and that's, other than getting up to go to the bathroom, I have not gotten out of bed today at all. I've been doing some gentle bed exercises, like just, you know, range of motion stuff, trying to keep my joints from getting stiff, but really I haven't done anything today. And I don't know, it's just, I'm not even, like I'm in my 30s. And if things are this bad now, like how? It's not safe to think about the future, like that's scary. That is a scary thought. And something that makes it even harder is like, I have kids you know, and I'm missing out on so much because this disease that's just, it's robbed me of a lot. And I mean, people that know me, I'm typically like a really sunny person. I'm like, help everyone, love everyone, heal everyone, play, you know, really goofy kind of person. And sometimes this disease robs me of who I am as a person, and that's so hard to deal with. Um, and I know this video is probably like super depressing, and I'm sorry, but I just feel like it's really important for people who don't have diseases like this, people that aren't sick like this, to realize that like somebody who looks perfectly healthy on a Tuesday can look like this on a on a Friday, you know. And you don't know, you have no idea what they're going through. And you have no right to give them a hard time about anything. Like, just don't, just don't be jerks to each other. Like, I know from experience that some days it is really hard to cling to reasons to stay alive. And I have two beautiful children and a very loving husband. And I'm fortunate enough that we live in a house where I'm safe and I have clean running water and heat, a nice bed to sleep in, and all these pillows. And I mean, I have so much, so much. I'm very abundantly blessed. And sometimes I have a hard time. So I think if I have as hard of a time as I do with everything that I have, all these wonderful blessings, all the excess that I'm, you know, lucky enough to have, all of the Netflix that I could possibly stream from my comfy bed, my million pillows. Like, if I'm having that hard of a time, I can't imagine what it's got to be like for somebody that doesn't have beautiful children and a loving husband or um, a robust social life or supportive online friends even, you know, because some people don't have that. They don't have that outlet. So what I'm saying is, like, you just don't know what somebody's going through. And I felt like it was really important to show you. Like, this is what I'm going through right now. Because if we can be more vulnerable with each other, if we can show each other, like, what the truth of our existence is, I can't imagine that that would bring anything but more compassion for one another, more understanding, more empathy, and more of a sense of connection. Because I don't think that you can really truly connect with somebody on a soul level unless you're both being vulnerable and this is me your friendly neighborhood weirdo being vulnerable and puffy and kind of sad today um 
days like today are hard, especially when I've been, because I've been kind of down for like the past, I don't know, about a month now. I've kind of been down for like a month now. And I saw it coming because winter is always really hard. But it's like, it's it keeps getting worse. You know, you think, you think you're at the bottom and then it goes lower. And so it it's really a hard time. But, um, I forgot what I was saying. I'm sorry, you guys. I guess the point is be nice to each other. It's really hard. Let's be vulnerable and open and honest about what we're going through instead of lashing out in what looks like anger because we don't have the energy to deal with somebody who might not agree with us. Like, I know I lashed out at my dear friend Heather yesterday on the internet over down pillows. It was stupid. It was a dumb thing, but I was just working with zero energy, laying on my down pillow and discussing whether or not it's humane. And I know that the down industry is not humane. Um, I don't need anybody to come for me. It was a gift and I use it. So, you know, it makes my life more bearable. It's here. It's something that I have. I did not go to the park, pick up a goose and start pulling its feathers off. Like I'm not a, a monster, but I snapped at her over it and it wasn't I mean, it was online, you know, so it was just a, a snide comment or whatever. And she called me out on it. She was like, wow, <laughs> that's not what I was trying to do. You know, she was just, she pointed out that I was being a jerk. And so I apologized sincerely. And I said, look, I am so sorry that I snapped at you. I am in a lot of pain today. I don't have any energy today. I'm asking you to extend me not only your forgiveness, but some grace because I just am not doing okay. And she, I don't want to get too emotional about this, but it was very touching. She said, thank you for your vulnerable honesty. Of course, I extend grace and healing vibes and love or whatever she said. And that is what we need, you know, to be able to say to each other, hey, I'm sorry, I made a mistake. And when somebody makes a mistake, to be able to say, I forgive you. I still love you. And um, I just don't think that we really live from there. But I've got nothing else, you know, to lose. Like, there's, I don't care how anybody feels about my vulnerability or about how weak I might be or how cool or uncool or what status I have. Like, I just want to live. I just... I just want to be alive and grateful. I want to have more good days than bad days. That's all that I want. And the rest of it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're puffy and you've got circles under your eyes and your face is breaking out and you look like a teenager and it doesn't matter what clothes you wear or what car you drive or what job you're working at or how big your house is or none of it. None of that matters. The only thing that I'm living for right now is love. That's it. I'm living because I love my family. I love my life. I love my existence. I love the earth. And I love strangers. I love everybody, you know? That's the only reason I keep going is because I feel like... I feel like the world needs more light. So, I'm sorry if this video is a total downer. And I'm sorry if my face isn't that pleasant to look at today. Um, and I'm sorry if my vulnerability makes you uncomfortable. But this is where I'm at right now. And I'm happy to be here. I'm not glad that I'm in pain or that I'm having a hard time. I'm just happy because I'm alive today. And that is such a precious gift. That is such a precious indescribable gift to be alive and I just don't have the energy for any kind of pretense so at the end of the day all we can do is try to take care of ourselves and each other and I hope that you guys do that too and I hope that if you're having a hard day and you see this that you know that you are precious and sacred and loved and that there's absolutely nothing wrong with resting when you need to 
Don't forget to drink water. Take care of yourselves, okay? Stay safe out there. Wear your masks. Wash your hands. Be kind to one another. Don't let them ripple your pond either. You know, if there's somebody out there that's just aggressive and loud about how your opinions are wrong, don't let it get to you. Just walk away. Don't let them ripple your pond. That's your pond. I'm going to go to sleep now. So thank you for listening to my sad ramblings before my 34th birthday. Um, yeah, this is this is what the end of 33 looks like. Hopefully I'll get some sleep tonight and I'll feel better tomorrow. And I won't look quite as puffy and haggard as I do right now. And thank you for being here. And I just hope you guys know how much I love you. Bye, guys.